Hey everybody, today we are building a PC. This is not a sponsored video, meaning that I'm not getting any money for this video. And if you guys buy one or a thousand of them, it still makes no difference to me. However, a lot of you guys ask me how hard is it to build a PC and what should you get? So I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to build a PC, show you how I do it. And if you guys want to order everything, there'll be a link in the description so you can order everything that you see here. Or you can enter the giveaway that they're doing for this exact PC. The link is going to be in the description as well. This is everything we have in the box. Ow. 16 gigs of DDR4, two terabytes, 7,200 RPM hard drive, AMD Risen 5 2600X, six core, 12 threads, max boost, 4.2 gigahertz CPU, 240 gigs SSD, 550 watts PSU, cooling for the CPU, I'm guessing, MSI motherboard for the AMD, and MSI Radeon RX 580. I'm gonna have to buy a case. I forgot exactly where we left off, but I think it was because we didn't have a case. The reason is because FedEx delivered this to the wrong address. So I had to track it down and find it. And luckily I got it back. So I didn't have to wait for another one, but everything is here as a package. Hey, honey, come here. Oh, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. On the top here, you have this small little filter, and on the bottom too, um, which protects. This is for the power supply, and this is for whatever cooling you have at the top. So I'm gonna put these to the side right now because we don't need them. This is the inside of the case. I haven't had a case that separates the power supply with actual metal. Here is the back of the case. These cables here are for the front controls, which you should be able to see here. The first step in any build is putting in the motherboard. This little bag came with the computer. I'm gonna open it up and here's the important part. Uh, this is what we're gonna need to put the motherboard down. In the box, you're gonna have the plate, which is going to go right here. Before I'm gonna put the plate, I'm just gonna lower the uh, motherboard in. I've just gently put the motherboard down and what we're looking for is all these mounts for the motherboard. We have three here, one, two, three, then three in the middle and three up top here. Let me lift the motherboard so I can show you what I'm talking about. In all of those places, we need this little mount that's gonna help us put the motherboard on. You can see we have one here, we don't have it there, don't have it there, have one there, don't have it there, don't have, don't have it there, don't have it there, and don't have it there. Those ones come in this little package which was inside of the case. Uh, and let's take them out. I put them here to the side. They're pretty unique. They're the only ones. You take the little mount and just simply screw it in its place. You might notice that after you put it in, you can't hand tighten it anymore. And that's where they give you this little tool to where you just put on top of this and you use a Phillips. I'm using a drill because I'm lazy. <laughs> After all of your nine screws are in place, that's when you're gonna lower the motherboard one more time. Make sure for every hole, you can see where the screw is gonna go because those are your mounting points for your motherboard. Don't screw it in just yet because we have to put in this little plate. Now, if you don't know which way the plate goes, this would be a good time to take a look at it. You can see that if you try to put it this way, it's not gonna go in because all of these audio ports I need those ones so we know that it's gonna go like this take the motherboard out one more time simply go inside the case bring it up to the edge push it a bit so it kind of clicks in there you go be very careful with um these little pieces of metal that stick out they don't hurt but they can kind of stab you a little bit and I've done that a bunch of times. I'm good now. One way is to see right here if it's aligning. So this is where we gotta move it up a little bit. There it goes. Everything's aligned here. Then we're gonna check for uh, the screws and we can see that this one right here is just a little bit off. So we're just gonna move it on top of that. Same thing with this one. This one is actually perfect. The rest of them should align. So this is where we're gonna 
tighten the motherboard to the case. Do not use a drill. Make sure to use a screwdriver because you don't want to over tighten it. You don't want to break anything. Out of the screws that we have, you'll see these ones that have a circle around it. Put those aside. We only need nine of them. And take one on the motherboard and simply just hand tighten it. Okay, we got a bit of resistance. That's where I stop. All of the screws are in. What I like to do next is the CPU. And the reason why I like to do the CPU is because we actually have a cooler for the CPU. This little booklet tells you everything you need to know. Here to tell you, you're gonna install the fans on the inside of the cooler, and then you're gonna put the cooler, cooler inside of the case. Follow the blades the way it's on the picture which means that both of them are gonna go like this. They give you these long screws, which come into uh, one of these little bags. Tighten them just enough so they don't fall, but don't tighten them to where you're gonna break the plastic. You're gonna see two cables going out of the fan, two cables going out of the fan, and then two cables going out of the cooler. This one right here, this is where you're gonna connect to your motherboard. And then this here is simply for RGB because this has lighting inside. And also the cooler, I believe the cooler master is gonna light up. Um, so what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna take all these ones that have the four pins. You can see that they're different, so there's no way you can confuse them. We're gonna take all of these circular uh, round pins and we're gonna put them all, all three of them. Then we're gonna take these pins that come in and we're gonna put them right in there. There's no wrong way to put it in. I didn't put that one all the way in, but you'll see in a second that it's going to click. This is RGB cable. So uh, three things go in here and then one goes out. So simply take uh, these three and plug them in here. I don't know if you guys can tell, but there's two little arrows there. Just make sure they're pointing at each other. Connect the three of them and you're done with that. After you have the three connected inside, you're gonna have uh, just one cable and basically we're gonna put that in and connect it to the power This one basically has this on the end and this on the one side So obviously it's only gonna go in on one side and again, this also has arrows So make sure to put the arrows uh, facing each other cooler master gives you um, this cable and As you go, we're gonna plug this in and this is power, and what that does, it's it's only going to power the lights. It's not gonna power the fans, it's only gonna power the lights. This cooler works on multiple CPUs, and if you open it, you're gonna find uh, different sockets for Intel, and then if you go on the back, you're gonna find the different sockets for AMD. This is the CPU, and this is the cooler that it comes with it. This will do the job, but if you plan on pushing your computer, overclocking it, keep in mind that the more you game, the hotter your CPU is gonna is gonna be. You can either have this little thing do the job, or you can have this thing do its job. So obviously this is gonna keep it much cooler, much lower temperatures, which is what you want. We're gonna look on the box, and right here you can see that it says socket AM4. Bring up this manual. We can see right here socket AM4, step 10. Um, this is where we're gonna have to mount on the cooler. And then right here, it shows you how to put it in. I found the brackets, which are exactly these ones. We have to put this on the sides. And luckily, this will only fit one way. We're gonna need one, two, three, we're gonna need four little screws. And like the other one, make sure to not over tighten the screws. Now we have the two brackets on the side. You can take a second to look what you're doing. Make sure you don't touch this at the bottom because um, that's where your CPU goes. But you can see that this little edges is going to click right there on the side. Um, and the other one is gonna click right there on the other side and then you'll just hand tighten them with the screws. And that's how you're gonna put it on the CPU. One of the most glorious moments is when you're gonna put the CPU in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open it. We're gonna put this little bracket out, pull it and lift and open it. There's the CPU. This is the part you don't want to touch, but you'll notice that this little edge here has a little gold triangle. You'll notice that none of the other quarters have that little triangle. If we look right here, you'll notice that that corner doesn't have it, that corner doesn't have it, that corner doesn't have it, but this corner has, and I don't know if you guys can see, but it's got a little triangle there. Guess what that means? You are correct, that corner it's gonna go right there. And you can see that I put it in, and even though I just put it in, 
it doesn't move anymore because it falls right in its place okay that's what it's supposed to do it's supposed to fall in it perfectly and then you're going to take this little bracket pull it down around and now the cpu is locked in place that's how easy it is to install a cpu it's literally the easiest thing to install in the whole computer next we're going to install the cpu cooler and basically what i wanted to show you right here is your line and you can see the screw for the hole there and then if we follow on the other side you're going to see it there so basically you can pretty much see all the holes here as they line up and that's where we're going to tighten them we just need to tighten these screws that's tight. I ran out of SD card space, but basically you have mounts here and just put the screws in and that's gonna hold the cooler in its place. It still has this protective uh, plastic in its place, so you're not gonna damage anything. This would be same like so. And then we would have right in here, this mount go over that little corner. And then right here, this mount would go over this one. And then we would just tighten the screws up and that would be it. If we take a look at this picture, uh, this is where the RGB comes in and that's what we've done. But you see the other two power cables for the fans go into a Y-shaped cable, which then goes into the motherboard. I'm gonna take out the two power cables for the two fans right here. They will only connect one way, so you don't have to worry about plugging them the wrong way. Our two cooler fans are gonna be powered by one cable, and this one has to go in the motherboard. This is where this book comes in, and we're gonna look on this page. CPU power, this is going to be coming from the power supply. Then we have CPU fan. Then we have system fan one here. Then we have pump fan. System fan 3, system fan 4, and we should have one more. System fan 2 right here. So this is where you can connect your fans. This is for the pump, and this is for the CPU fan. This is the Y that's coming from the two fans here. That's going to be going right there. Let me see if I can zoom in. Uh, right there is CPU fan, right? Because that's what it says right here. CPU fan is right next to the RAM. These are the, uh, the four RAM sticks, and that's where the CPU fan is going to be going on. And then right here, oh, they even named it on the case. You got system fan and pump fan. So this is where we're gonna connect our pump, which is this big thing here. Let me try to do that. I don't think I can do it with one hand, can I? Oh yeah, I'm doing it with one hand. There we go. Oh, and then I realized I blocked everything. This is the part where everybody freaks out, which is where you're going to put thermal compound on the CPU itself. This is how much I'm going to be put. Ting in. Boom, that's it. It's going to be a bit tricky. Um, try not to move it too much after you you put it on the CPU. So I'm just gonna put this little bracket here. And then I'm going to be putting the CPU cooler down. So it's starting to tighten up. Tighten a little bit here a little bit there just kind of go back and forth you don't want to over tighten it just stop when you pretty much can't tighten it by hand anymore my overhead microphone didn't record this part but this is the power supply if you like to have a clean computer go for a modular power supply you can see on the back of the power supply that there's holes you can connect as many cables as you need this is a non-modular power supply and you can see that all the cables are connected to the power supply so if you don't need a cable you have to figure out where to hide it in your computer on a modular power supply you are only going to connect what you need to connect so first we're starting with the mother board power cable cpu power cable it's only got two ends and it's marked perfectly on the power supply where to plug it in then we got pci express and that's for the video card we have two hard drives so we're gonna also plug in the sata so and you can again everything is marked perfectly on this and if you're wondering about the cables you can look on the book it's everything is marked perfectly the case that i have you can see at the bottom that it has holes for air to flow through it which means that we're gonna have to put our power supply with the fan down simply slide it in and when you're gonna push it all the way to the edge it should align with some holes and you'll have four screws that came with the power supply and simply screw them in we have um, these cables at the back which are coming from the power supply and we have these holes here and that's where we're gonna fish our cables and go wherever we need them to go now the first thing we're gonna do is we're not gonna connect the motherboard this is that one big cable it's the thickest cable it's the only one like it. 
So we're gonna go pretty much to the hole in the middle. All right, and we can see that we've come out with it here. And there is only one way to connect this cable in here. And then simply push the cable back out. Remember this booklet with uh, the directions to it. We know that the CPU is right up here. We're gonna take the cable that only has one end because this one's the one that goes to the CPU. There's a hole up here that we can put it through. So we're gonna put it here. I have to remove my lion ring because my finger won't fit through there. We now have the motherboard powered. We have the CPU connected. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some RAM sticks in here. The RAM sticks are gonna go right here. Make sure to open them all up. These two are the RAM sticks that we're gonna put in. This is where the book comes in and you find out exactly how you're supposed to put your two RAMs. Right here, it tells me that if I'm gonna install one RAM, I should put it on the second slot away from the CPU. So we have one, two, three, four. I should put it on the second one. If I install two sticks of RAM, I should do it on the second and on the fourth. Um, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. I don't know if you can tell, but one side is longer and one side is shorter. This will only go in one way. Uh, so if you put it the wrong way, it's not a problem. Just don't force it in. You don't wanna damage them. Make sure it's in all the way. Perfect, perfect. Right now, we're gonna turn this around. And we're gonna take a look at what's going on right here in the back. And if I do this and pull it out, uh, this is the tray to where you're gonna install your hard drive or hard drives. So we actually have two of them. First is this one here, which sort of came out of the package. Uh, but this one has actually been installed with Windows I don't know which windows they give you, but this actually comes installed with windows. They have tested it and you have windows on it. And we also have a case. On the back here, you have a push button. So if you look closely, you push and you can actually drag it open. So this actually opens up. And the reason why it opens up is so you can close in your hard drive. So we're gonna install our hard drive on this one really quick. And then we're gonna install this with the tip out because that's where we're gonna be connecting our cables. We're gonna have a power cable and a SATA cable going out of this. Then we have this one. And basically these, these screws align here to where you can just close it. And then that's it. You've got it mounted. Uh, this little plate underneath comes from HyperX, which is the uh, SSD. Um, and now, for example, I would be ready to just put this one back in, connect power, and then I'm good to go. We have another hard drive, and if you have one of these, these are actually even easier to install. So what you do, you take this thing, you push it and open it, it just slides out. Then you're gonna take your hard drive, you're gonna align it with the holes, because they easily click into place, and then that's it. You, you don't need any screws, you don't need anything. And then take this one, put it back in here. And then for that one as well, I can just simply connect the power and the cable and I'm good to go. No screws required or anything. If we want to connect the power, we can take this one, uh, the thin one. This only connects in one way, so there's no wrong way to put it. Connect this one here at the top. We're gonna to connect this one here at the second one. Then we have two more here which in one of them we're gonna have to plug in um, our RGB lights. Motherboard box right here. Can I zoom this out? Oh yeah, I can zoom out. The motherboard book, you're gonna find the pages for the SATA connectors. What I wanted to make sure is that they're all the same. Sometimes some SATA uh, connectors are different, but they're all the same. So it doesn't really matter where I plug them in. I'll show you exactly where they go on the motherboard. Let's go ahead and plug them in here. And again, these only connect one way. So that's one connected and that's it. Both of them are connected. We're gonna take both of these cables and put them through the first hole and then just fish them out on the other side. Uh, right here is where they connect. And the good part is that they only go in one way. So we're gonna connect them right here and you're gonna hear it click. And then the second one, we're gonna put right on top of it. We have both of them connected really well right here. We are done with the power supply, the motherboard, the CPU, CPU cooler, RAM, hard drives. Um, we could actually start it because the motherboard, I see it has an HDMI output, but we do have a video card, so we're gonna plug in the video card. Uh, but before we do that, uh, we're just gonna try to take care 
of a couple of these cables here. These are RGB stuff, which have their own controllers right here. Um, so this came inside the case and it simply plugs in to the one output from this thing here. So if I connect it in, make sure that the two, uh, the two triangles align and I plug this in a power source, which we have one right here. Then our RGB for the front is now fully connected. So RGB is good to roll. Here we have this thing here, which on it, it says USB 3.0, because if you guys remember right there, we have USB 3.0. This is the thing that a lot of people are scared of. And it's, it's simple to just, you just got to plug them in and you're done. You have the power switch. So you turn on the power, then you have the hard drive light, which is not really a necessity. It's got like a little led that shows you when the hard drive is working. Uh, and then you have the reset switch. If your PC freezes, you can just press the reset button and it'll reset it. And then the last thing that we have, it's the HD audio. And that's if you want to plug it in the front, a microphone and headphones. What we're going to do right now is we're going to take the motherboard booklet. This is the overview of the controls. So we see here that we have SATA 1, SATA 2 and USB 3.0. So right away, we can look here and we have SATA 1, SATA 2, and USB 3.0. So the easiest thing right now, I'm sorry if I'm blocking the camera, but that's connected. Then the front audio connector is JAUD1. Um, and that is all the way here at the edge. We have a bunch of stuff. And then this one right here is J audio one. If we look at the audio connector, you'll see that that one spot is blank. So all we have to do is line it up. We'll just slide in very easily. And that's it. Last thing that we need to connect is basically three things here. What we're looking for here, front panel connectors, JFP1 and JFP2. If we look here, right next to USB 3.0, we have two USBs and then we have JFP1. Two regular USB, USB, USB. And this right here, you can see right underneath it, underneath it, uh, JFP1, right? So this is where we have to connect our pins. There is a page specific for this and it could not be easier. The three that we have is the power switch, power on and off, reset switch and hard drive LED. We actually don't have power LED. Uh, that's totally fine. LED stuff, you don't necessarily even need to connect them. We just care about the power switch and the reset. We definitely need those. We're gonna take our power switch and do plus and minus right there. And then we know that on the other side, if we look at this one, we know that on the other side, we have the reset switch. A reset switch and plug it in hard drive led plus and minus that's connected then we have these two pins empty here for power led and then we have one pin on this side that is just empty and that's it i have a fan right here um, that we also need to connect and then if we look at this page we have what we're looking for is system fan so we actually have a system fan right here um, and then if we look on the motherboard, it is right there. So then again, this thing can only go in one way. Boom, that right now is connected. And that was it. The last piece is the video card. Remove this at the bottom. And now we're ready to plug it in. I need to take out the second and the third little guard here. Keep those screws because that's what you're gonna be plugging in uh, to hold the, uh, the video card in its place. It's not difficult to put a video card in. So we're just going to drop it in. That's it. We're going to take the screws that we just removed, put them back here. The last thing that we need to do for the graphics card is uh, take this PCI Express cable and we're going to fish it in. But we have the video card here. It has pretty much eight pins. So we got to use um the eight pin connector and then simply just plug it in and this is one of those things that it can only go in one way so you're gonna hear a click well not much of a click but it went in so we're gonna turn the power on um 
I don't know. I thought there might be some like LEDs or something on the motherboard. And I'm going to touch the power button and see where we're at. All right. What are we at? Now that we know that everything is running, we can take some of these cables, tie them up here, and just pretty much clean this place out. After you clean it up a little bit and you're comfortable with it, then you can put a front cover on it. Turn on the power supply, turning on the computer. As you can see, it's running. Just in case of anything, I got a fire extinguisher. Oh, hey. Oh, ho, ho, hello. All right. Well, it does have windows and it runs on it the wrong resolution but that's because we got to install some drivers uh, the only thing that it doesn't have it actually does not have a Wi-Fi connection it's actually just Ethernet so I'm gonna have to run an Ethernet cord but once we connect the uh, Ethernet cord and we can download the drivers for the video card and everything but hey PC runs no problem I built it all in I think all in all it took about three or four hours I did have to download a lot of footage and obviously explain it uh, but this is something that you can easily do in an afternoon just set it up comes running um, next thing we're gonna do is run an Ethernet cord download some stuff and I'll show you guys how to stream.